back to News Geelong as we continue with the pulsating world of Geelong sport and our own flying hawk, Nathan Curry. Good evening, Nathan. What's the latest sports news? Thanks very much, Rollo, and good evening, everyone. Well, we'll jump straight into sport tonight because there is plenty happening down at the Geelong Football Club because Marcus Drum, who came over to the Cats from Fremantle at the end of the 2009 season, has decided to pull the pin on his AFL career after two interrup injury-interrupted seasons. News Geelong was able to catch up with him earlier and it was a pleasure to talk to him. Now, Marcus, was it a, was it a tough decision to pull the pin on your career? Uh, yes and no. I suppose, um, yeah, the injuries had sort of taken their toll and, uh, yeah, mentally I was, um, I was probably uh, mentally gone going through all the injuries. So, um, yeah, it, it's a tough decision but also a relieved one as well. When did you decide to retire? Uh, probably on the weekend. Um, I'd been sort of thinking if, if anything went again injury-wise, um, that was probably going to be it. Um, just struggling to get continuity in training and training and playing, so yeah, probably over the weekend. Did you have the same injury problems at Fremantle? Oh, I suppose at Freo they were probably more um, just tweaks here and there. Missed, missed a couple of weeks, two or three weeks here and there. Um, probably form was more the issue there um, getting, and getting picked, but, but yeah, here it's just a run of bad luck. Um, and yeah, just uh, nothing, nothing I could control and, um, and yeah, like I said, it, it took its toll. Do you see yourself playing at a lower level or is this it? Yeah, I'd like to keep playing. I'm still only 24. Um, for, now, for now, it's just sort of getting myself together, getting my body right and, um, and yeah, I'd love to, uh, to still be playing footy again. Was your decision based on medical advice? No, nah, not at all. It was within myself. Um, yeah, you know, go through that many injuries, um, start questioning your body a bit as well. So that certainly spoke for me, but definitely no, no medical advice at all. Will you be around the club until the end of the season or will you take a break now? Yeah, I'll probably have a break um, initially. Um, the option's there to sort of help out with VFL on game day, which, uh, you know, after a couple of weeks I might look to do that or I might be, might be quite happy sitting back watching the boys having a beer and, uh, and do that. So, uh, yeah, I'm not in any rush to make a decision. But, um, but yeah, it gives me a bit of a chance to further my, uh, what I want to do outside of footy and um, we're at long player welfare and development. So... I'll uh, hopefully continue to study with that and see what comes of that. Finally, Marcus, I hear you're in the Players Association now doing some welfare type stuff. Yeah, in the Next Goal program, doing some uh, player welfare stuff down at the Geelong Falcons. So, really enjoy that and um, it's certainly given me a passion to hopefully head down that, that path in the future and, and uh, maybe have a career in that, who knows. Thanks very much for your time, Marcus, and from all of us here at News Geelong, good luck in whatever you choose to do in the future. Before we ask his coach, Chris Scott, a few questions, he would like to comment further on the Marcus Drum situation. So I'd just like to reiterate a few of the things that, that Marcus said. Uh, everyone at the Geelong Footy Club really admires the way he's gone about it. He's had nothing but bad luck. He's virtually injured every part of his body, from a detached retina and a broken nose to a back, a hamstring, an ankle, a calf. Uh, it's just been one thing after another, but he's coming to the club every day with a smile on his face and really committed himself to the task. And, you know, one final hamstring injury with four or five games to go was the last straw, but um, he certainly handled himself with aplomb at the Geelong Footy Club and everyone here has nothing but the utmost respect for him. Did you have much to do with Marcus during your time at Fremantle? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I, I coached the defence at Fremantle and Marcus was primarily in that group, so I got to know him quite well. I um, was really looking forward to working closer with him um, as a Geelong person, um, but as I said, it was just one thing after another, um, everything beyond his control. His approach to training was first class and all of our players really admired the way he went about it because he, um, he could have been forgiving, forgiven for throwing in the towel a long time before now. Um, but he persisted right up until the very end. And this is the end. He, was just, he just had no more um, bullets to fire. Did you see his retirement coming? Oh, look, to be honest, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have been surprised if it had come a few months ago. Such had been his run of bad luck. But he made a commitment, like a few of our other long-term injured players, to really knuckle down and do everything he possibly could so that, at worst-case scenario, if it didn't work out for him, he could look back and say, I gave myself every chance, and he certainly did that. It frees up a spot on your list for a rookie, doesn't it? Oh, potentially, yeah. We've got a really healthy list at the moment, so that's not something that we'd be um, rushing to judgement on. But, yeah, that's the, that's the reality of the situation. Now, we assume Otto will come straight back into the side, but what other changes will we see this week? 
Oh, we've, we've certainly got a big list of players available. So, yeah, Ottens is back from suspension. We expect Menzel and Duncan to be available. Shannon Burns is doing absolutely everything we're asking of him. Um, he's going to be hard to ignore over the next couple of weeks. Um, Darren Milburn's missed a lot of footy now, but it looks like he's healthy. Um, who else have we got? Anyone else you can think about? Well, Scarlett, obviously. Yeah, we, we'd like to think he'll be right to go. Uh, Wojcinski's the other one. That, that should be fit and available. Does Darren Milburn still command a spot in your best 22? Yeah, in my mind he does. Yeah, but the best 22 changes from week to week. Um, as I've said all season, we have a number of objectives at selection. One is the short term and, and what we need for that week. But the other thing is uh, making sure we've got the list as healthy as possible and in as good a form as possible at the end of the season. So um, while I say yes now, um, there are very few players um, that I can guarantee are in the best 22 that, that aren't currently playing. Is Cam Mooney coming along as you would have hoped? The plan is going well at the moment. He's, he played well again on the weekend. Um, I feel like I'm repeating myself every week, but the plan was to get him up for August and September. That, that plan appears to be going really well and he's giving himself every chance. Again, he, three or four months ago, he could have been forgiven saying this is all too hard, my body's just not up to it anymore. But he's absolutely committed himself to the cause and looks on track to making himself available when it counts. Thanks very much for your time, Chris, and good luck to you and your boys on the weekend. I'm sure you'll have no trouble in beating the Tigers. Well, that's it for me this week. But before I go, just want to wish the boys from Thompson, Belmont Lions and Newtown and Chilwell Footy Clubs all the best in their past players' days tomorrow. Hope you have a good day, boys. I'll be back next week, but until then, it's back to you, Rollo. Thank you, Nathan. Enjoy your weekend watching the Torquay Tigers playing the Anglesey Kangaroos in the E.J. Witten Foundation rivalry round match, the Battle of the Great Ocean Road. Now to the Geelong and Surf Coast weather for the next six days. It's a very good evening to our scintillating Sophie Miller, comfortable and warm in our new Geelong studios. Good evening, Sophie. How's the winter weather continuing? Thank you, Graham, and good evening to our News Geelong viewers on another cold winter evening as we take a look at our predicted weather conditions over the next six days. To start off the weekend, on Saturday, it will be partly cloudy with southeasterly winds and a top of 13. Sunday will be patchy, fog during the early morning with isolated showers and cloudy periods over the Geelong and the surf coast with a top of 14. To start off another winter week in July, on Monday it will continue to be partly cloudy with isolated showers and a top of 13. While next Tuesday will be partly cloudy with isolated showers around Geelong and the surf coast areas and an expected top also of 13. Wednesday will be partly cloudy and a little warmer with a top of 16. While Thursday will see similar cloudy conditions prevail and continue top of 16. Today was partly cloudy with isolated showers during the morning and around Geelong and the surf coast with a top temperature of 15. That's the wintry weather outlook for tonight, so rug up and keep warm until next Wednesday evening. Have a safe and pleasant weekend and it's back to you, Graham. Thank you, Sophie. You enjoy the weekend and stay safe and warm. And thank you for being with us on News Geelong this Friday evening. To our good friends, Ross and Kath Haberman, take your time and smell the flowers. From all the team at News Geelong, have a pleasant evening, a warm and safe weekend and a very good night.